being alarmed. You know, many, many people live in fear. And what we just talked about now, everything that's going on with this disease and everything, people are living in fear. Many people live in fear of what might take place not only today, but in the future times. What does it have to do with, well, sometimes with things that are happening in your family, or maybe you're even your job, your career, or what's going on in the world around us. Many of us, unfortunately, live in a constant state of fear. We never relax. Even Christians, amen, sometimes live in fear. Well, think about it. We look out our window. Maybe there's a big storm brewing. We turn on the TV news and we pick up a newspaper or something. We see all the crazy stuff that's going on in the world. And sometimes it upsets you. And once Jesus had some followers and they went up to him and they, they said, Jesus, listen, what, what do we need to be looking for? Some kind of sign that the world is coming to an end. Maybe they too were living in a fear about what's going to happen in the future. Well, Jesus answered them, and the answer has become known as the Olivet Discourse. And it's found in Matthew chapter 24, beginning in verse 4. <clears throat> Matthew 24, verse 4. <clears throat> They asked Jesus that question, what do, we, what do we need to look for? And here's what Jesus said to him, beginning in verse 4. He said, listen, watch out that nobody deceives you. He said, because many are going to come, and they're going to come in my name, Jesus says, and they're claiming that I'm the Christ, they're the Christ, and they're going to deceive, deceive a whole bunch of people, the Bible said. In verse 6, he says, you're going to hear about wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. That's the important part. See to it that you are not alarmed. He said, you will hear about all these things happening, but see to it you're not alarmed. Why? He says, because such things must happen, but the end is still to come. In verse 7, he says, nation... They're going to rise against each other, kingdom against kingdom. There'll be famines, earthquakes <clears throat> in various places. All these things are the beginning of birth planes. Now, Jesus is speaking about all these horrible things that would happen. But then he says, <clears throat> but don't get alarmed. Don't get alarmed. You see, we as Christians were not meant to live in fear wondering when the next calamity is going to occur. Because what does that tell you? When you live in fear, that means you're, you feel like you're all alone. Nobody's there to protect you. But Christians aren't alone. God is there to protect us. So that's why he says to us, we don't need to live in fear. And he just gave us a list in this scripture of some things that we should expect to happen as we live our lives in this world. Things that will take place no matter what year we're in, what era, <clears throat> what nation we live in. Actually, whether we're believers or not, these things are still going to happen. So let's examine the things we should expect and then consider several reasons why we should not be alarmed. Number one, what we should expect, right? Jesus clearly stated the things were the things that we're about to discover not only will happen, but it's a, it's a thing that is going to happen. And even though a lot of people will tell you this, these are not signs of the end time. The end time's already started, but these, when these things happen, doesn't mean the end is going to happen next week. Unfortunately, even some churches, they have these little website or WhatsApp apps, and a hurricane happens, like that one that happened in Jamaica or whatever. Oh, this is it. This is the end of the world. It's coming. See what just happened? No, God's trying to let us know that these things are going to happen, but that doesn't mean the end is going to happen in the next couple of days. There are signs of things that will continue to happen until Jesus comes back. So what should we expect because of all this? 
spiritual compromise. In Matthew 24, verse 4, Jesus said what? He said, watch out that no one deceives you. See, when these things happen, the enemy comes and tries to deceive you and, and try to trick you. And Jesus says, many will come in my name, claiming I'm the Christ, and they're going to deceive you. <clears throat> there were false messiahs who arose before Jesus was even here, and we still have false messiahs here today. Amen? Think about it. I don't know if you ever heard of Jim Jones, that cult leader. Diana or David Koresh, another cult leader in, in the Waco, Texas thing, where he had all those people kill themselves because they were following his commands. Amen? <clears throat> Today we're talking about why we should not fear <clears throat> all these things that happen in the world. Amen. So in addition to all those <clears throat> cult leaders and things that are going on in the world, people claim to be God or have some secret insights on God. Nobody else knows these except this person, and they want you to believe that. The list goes on and on. <clears throat> and there was all those people that necessarily don't claim to be Christ, but through their misguided and inaccurate teachings, they set themselves up to be false prophets. Almost every book in the Bible, in the New Testament, warns us of these false teachers that will be in our midst. Let's look at the book of 2 Peter, chapter 2, verse 1. It says, there were false prophets in Israel, just as there will be false teachers among you, meaning among us. They will cleverly teach destructive heresies and even deny the master who brought them. In this way, they will bring sudden destruction on themselves. <clears throat> Verse 2. Many will follow these people's evil teaching, the Bible says, and shameful immorality. And because of these teachers, the way of the truth will be slandered. So why is the Bible letting us know this? It's letting us know to warn us that we should expect these kind of teachers, these false teachers and prophets to come up and be in our society. And it's not something new. It's been happening since before Jesus was even here. And it's something that we should expect to deal with until Jesus returns once again. So this is something we should be concerned about and we have to do what we can but again, it's not something that we should allow to control our lives and put us in a state of constant fear. Matter of fact, when you know about something, <clears throat> you don't fear it as much. When you know these certain things are going to happen, and they do, and Jesus tells you, don't worry about it, these things are going to happen, then it's not a big deal, right? It's something you expect. The Bible tells us to expect this. <clears throat> All right, what else? We should expect, Jesus said, times of <clears throat> national conflict. Again, back to his words in Matthew 24, verse 6. Jesus says, you're going to hear about wars, rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Just because those wars are happening that's Jesus not coming back the next day. That's not what it means, because they've been happening since a long time ago, all these wars. It says nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Jesus wants us to know, don't get all upset when these things happen. There's never been a time in our history, really, history of the world, when some nation wasn't in some kind of conflict with another place, <clears throat> or maybe some civil war in a nation. But we're still here, aren't we? Many times these are numerous conflicts at the same time. Now, none of us like war, right? Sometimes we understand there's a need for war at times to protect ourselves, especially in today's world where we can see the 
what happens now, we can see it a lot easier because of news on TV and all that stuff, the internet. Years ago, you didn't know what a war was all about, but now you can see for yourself. So it, it kind of makes it too real for us. I'm not here today to make an argument for or against war, but simply to convey the fact that Jesus said, listen, we're going to have conflict and you need to expect that. <clears throat> Now, it's something to be concerned about, obviously, but again, he said, don't go running in fear when this stuff happens, because these things will continue to happen, Jesus says, until I return. <clears throat> also, what we talked about the hurricanes and the tsunamis, <clears throat> natural calamity is going to happen. Again, he said that in Matthew 24, there will be famines, earthquakes, in different places, all these are beginnings of birth pain. We just had an earthquake outside of where? Cuba, right? And some, some places, some churches said, oh, that's, this is it, this is the end. No, Jesus trying to let us know that these things will happen and it's not the end. No man can predict when the, Jesus will return. Only Jesus knows that. And when he comes back, we will know it. In the meantime, if somebody claims they know he's coming, they, people have been doing this for years. Oh, in 10 years, it's going to be the end of the world. Well, those 10 years and these eight years all been going and going. We're still here. Nobody can predict the end of the world. Just like climate change. God made this earth. God's in charge of the climate. Nothing we can do down here is going to change it. People say, oh, in four years, the earth is going to be gone because of what we did. No, how would they predict? They must be pretty good. They must be pretty good. And the same people say that they're gonna do away with air travel and everything else because airplane exhausts and cows, when they poop, they make an exhaust that kills people. So we're gonna kill all the cows, get rid of all air transportation. <clears throat> and then these same people, after making a speech, get on their private jet and fly home. So, you know, if they don't, if they believe that, then they wouldn't be flying the jets either. They'd be taking, walking home, wouldn't they? <laughs> but we get alarmed for some reason every time there's a disaster or an earthquake or a hurricane. And then actually some Christians start looking to the skies when this happens to see if Jesus is coming back. Now, you, you shouldn't say anything about somebody who desires Christ's return because <clears throat> we all do because he's coming to take us to a great place in heaven where we don't have to worry about any more sickness, any more pains or aches or any of that stuff. But he's going to come back when it's ready for his time. We're on his time, not on our time. We don't decide when things happen. Jesus decides that. <clears throat> things should not alarm us that happen in this earth because if we read and believe in the Bible, Jesus is telling us it's going to happen. Just don't worry about it. Now, while we do mourn the lives of people that are lost in these things, right? We should go and help them to rebuild their houses they lost or, or just console them if they lost a family member. That's our job as Christians. We're not alarmed in the sense that we live in a state of fear because Jesus promised that these things would take place. But we are to go help these people in their time of need because that's what we do as God's people. Jesus, Jesus gives us three circumstances in which we're not to be alarmed. And in doing so, I think he really means that we're not supposed to be alarmed in any circumstance. I mean, I, go, I fall through it myself sometimes. I get excited about it. My wife says, you get too excited about little things. And I try to, you know, I, when I look at that, I, you know, you're right. You're right. And, when you, and you, when you do think about that, and you think about how tiny that is compared to everything else in your life, you say, why am I wasting time worrying about this little thing when I should be enjoying the time here on earth? Enjoying my life. And when you think about it that way, you actually feel, <clears throat> you feel happy again. You feel like, wow, this is cool. <laughs> Whether it's a disease, a natural disaster, a loss of a job or whatever, 
don't be alarmed and be in a state of fear. You might say, okay, well, why shouldn't we be alarmed? Why? Because God is always with us. He promises us that there'll never be a time when he's not present with us. He states it in his great commission. Look at Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. He says, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. And then what does he say? Be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So if we truly believe in him and we believe in the Bible, there it is. I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, how else do we know that Jesus is with us? Well, Jesus is, in fact, God, isn't he? And God is also the Holy Spirit. So it's three things. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three things in one person, really. When we accept Jesus Christ in our life and truly believe who he is <clears throat> and that he went on Calvary's <coughs> cross to take our punishment, what happens? <clears throat> we receive the Holy Spirit in our body. So that means we have God with us at all times. So when it's time for you to go and pray to God and tell him what you did wrong for the day and confess your sins to him, say, Jesus, I'm sorry I did this. Sometimes we say, gee, I really don't want to tell him this. Guess what? He already knows what you did. He's within you. It's like a little kid who did something and thinks his parents don't know he did it. Your parents know, right, when you did something wrong. God is our parent. He's our God, our Father. He knows when we did something wrong. And what's so nice about Him, He's not ready to chastise us like our earthly parents. He wants us to tell Him so that He can forgive us because He loves us so much. He wants us to call Him. And we have a direct line. We don't have to get that thing that says, press one for Jesus, two for somebody... And then we, we're, we're, we're happy you called. We appreciate your call. We really, really want to help you. So please stand by your caller number 406. No, you talk to Jesus right away. He's waiting. He loves it when we go to him in prayer. So anyway, the passage we deal with refers to Jesus and how he loves us and how he says not to worry, because I'm going to be here. So he's saying what? First he tells us, you're going to expect these things, but then in parallel wise, he says, even if they happen, and they will happen, you don't have to worry about it. So it's two things. We know things are going to happen, but we don't have to worry about it. I'd like that to happen with my bills. I know I'm going to have bills, but I don't know how I'm going to pay for it, right? <laughs> But with Jesus, we know these things are going to happen, but we know we don't have to worry about it. Wow, if all life could be like that, huh? that'd be great. I know I'm going to have a final exam. How do I know I'm going to pass it? But you really know because you need to study, right? What else do you need to study in life? The Bible. That's your textbook. When you put the school textbook down, you better have this textbook too because... There's a final exam for that, too, right? If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and time in the end time comes, you're going to be left behind. And I don't want to be left behind, because I don't want to be in torture for the rest of my life. I want to go to that place that Jesus, he says he has a home already prepared for us in heaven. What a mansion that must be. Jesus not only faced the cross for us, he continues to face everything that happens in life with us. It's not us going alone through some bad times, because Jesus is with us, he's going through it also. But he's there to support us, to let us know that we're not alone in this. Look at Psalm 48, 14. For that is what God is like. He is our God forever and ever, and he will what? Guide us until we die. 
until we die. I don't know about you, but it gives me a great deal of comfort to know that God is with me 24-7, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and that he's never going to leave. No matter what I have to deal with, <clears throat> he's going to be with me through it all. There's even a song like that, <clears throat> through it all. Jesus is with you through whatever you're going through in life. Another reason we don't need to be alarmed is because we are citizens of heaven. Citizens of heaven. Because we know and truly believe Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, we received citizenship to heaven. We don't have to apply for a passport or a visa. We got it. But sometimes I think as Christians, sometimes we live like illegal aliens, don't we? For some reason, we don't know of or we don't claim our rights as citizens of the heavenly kingdom. We don't have to be shy about it. Philippians 3 and 20 says, we are what? Citizens of heaven. Where's heaven? Where the Lord Jesus Christ lives and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our savior. Now, this citizenship is not something that takes place in the future. We're already citizens. But according to Paul, right, it's our present possession. He wrote that. He says, we are citizens of heaven. So not only will we fully comprehend or experience the glory of heaven, amen, we don't have to wait until we die to experience the glory of heaven or Jesus returns because we've already realized our fact that we have citizenship in heaven. And when we, when we really truly begin to recognize that we are citizens of heaven, really our lives begin differently. Because as a citizen of this world, we see tragedy after tragedy, and we're overwhelmed by the sinful behavior around us. Amen. I got to fix my scripture down here. You see, you know, sometimes we <clears throat> If we're a citizen of a country for a long time, we kind of take it for granted, right? But like if you come to Curso, if you haven't been the native here and you try to get citizenship, you see it's, it's a big deal to try to do that. And send free people going to America to try to get citizenship there. You have to go through all kind of classes and investigations. You have to supply all kind of documents and everything. Then you realize, wow, this is a big deal, this citizenship thing. But when you've been a citizen for a long time, you kind of don't, you take it for granted. And that's what God is trying to tell us. Don't take this for granted. We are citizens of heaven. This is a big deal in our lives. The, the best part is we didn't have to go through all that paperwork and all that investigation trying to be a citizen because Christ did it all for us. He suffered on that cross so that we could be citizens of heaven. And that's what's something we, we shouldn't take for granted. No matter what happens down here on this earth, it cannot affect our citizenship in heaven. So it should give us purpose and confidence that we need so we do not have to live our life in fear. And guess what? We are the church, and the church cannot be defeated. Even though there's a lot of places today that they're trying to say you can't have church services in school, you can't even mention God in school anymore, you can't do a lot of things, right? Or incidents like earthquakes and stuff, right? Christianity, you cannot do away with God's church. You cannot, the church has a message of hope no matter what's going on in the world, no matter what disaster or calamity. 
The world may seem hopeless, but God's people, the church, give the rest of the world hope. The church is still the place, thank God, where you can find hope. Because God's church will never be destroyed. We're not talking about the building. We're talking about the people. No matter what the world throws at God's people, his church will not be destroyed. Matthew 16 and 18 says, I say to you that you are Peter, which means the rock, called Peter the rock, and upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. All the powers of hell cannot touch that church. Because as believers in Christ, we're a member of God's church, and the church will fight all its battles, even though it will be attacked, it will be criticized. Some people think they don't need to be in the church. Sometimes the church doesn't always get the support it needs, doesn't always have enough people to volunteer. Member men sometimes only has two hour a week members, people that just come to church on Sunday and then forget about God and the rest of it for the rest of the week. Some people come to be served instead of to serve others. A lot of people come to church just, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? And then a lot of other people that do get saved and are church members, they don't want to tell anybody else about it. They want to be selfish with their gift. It doesn't cost you anything to let others know about your free gift of salvation. It's not like you have to share it by cutting a piece of your salvation off. No. All you're doing is letting people know about your gift that God has given you. Why be selfish with it? You're still going to have it. No matter how many people you tell, you're still going to have what God has given you. But God will always prevail. No matter what they throw at the church, God will prevail. <clears throat> Nobody better mess, amen, with God's church. And who is God's church? Everybody in here today. If we're a Christian, <clears throat> we're part of what they call the universal church, which is nothing more than the assembly of believers. There's the local church like this is. There's denominations and all that stuff. But overall, everybody who is a believer is part of the universal church, which is God, God's church. No matter what denomination, no matter where the little local church is located, no matter what nation it's in, we're all God's children. It's time to stop being alarmed. <clears throat> every time the going gets tough, right? Every time you turn on the TV, every, every time you see bad weather, right? Every time you can't pay a bill, we get nervous, but we shouldn't. Jesus tells us what we should expect. He already said, listen, there's going to be compromise. There's going to be spiritual compromise. There's going to be national conflict. There's going to be calamities that happen on the earth. But he also says, don't be alarmed. Listen, he says, I'm in control. He says, there's no need to worry, guys. The church can't be defeated because we are citizens of heaven. <clears throat> There's going to be wars, rumors of wars, false teachers, all that stuff. <clears throat> but thank God there was somebody greater, amen, than all that could possibly threaten us here on earth. And that is God himself. Let's pray. <coughs> Lord, we, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to hear your word today. We thank you that you are with us through every step of this life and that we are citizens of heaven, Lord. We thank you that you let us know that we should expect all these things to happen during our lifetime here on this earth. <clears throat> and we also thank you that we learned today that we don't have to worry about these things happening. Yes, be concerned and help others when it affects someone, but not to be alarmed because you are there to protect us, to be with us, you already warned us these things would happen, but we know that we are citizens of heaven and that no one can come against us because you are Lord of lords, King of kings, and the God who created the heavens and the earth.
Amen. Amen.